Hello students, welcome back to uh, class 8 English uh, tutoring class and today we'll be taking a poem called The Ant and the Cricket. So students, if you can, uh, uh, if, if you can have your textbooks with you because we will be referring to some certain lines in the poem and we will also be reading the poem. So if you can have your textbooks, page number 21. Page number 21 of your textbook, the ant and the cricket. So this is a poem. Some people, P-O-E-M, for this, some people, People, they prefer saying poem. Poem is British English and for some they prefer saying poem but both are correct okay so for me I prefer saying poem all right okay now so before uh, starting the lesson we will do a re reading session of the poem page number 21 the ant and the cricket a silly young cricket, accustomed to sing through the warm sunny months of gay summer and spring, began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter was come. Not a crumb to be found on the snow-covered ground, not a flower could he see, not a leaf on a tree. Oh, what will become, says the cricket, of me. At last by starvation and famine met bold, all dripping with wet and all trembling with cold, away he set off to a miserly ant to see if, to keep him alive, he would grant him shelter from rain and a mouthful of grain. He wished only to borrow, he'd repay it tomorrow. If not, he must die of starvation and sorrow. Says the cricket to the says the ant to the cricket, I'm your servant and friend, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. But tell me, dear cricket, did you lay nothing by when the weather was warm? Caught the cricket. Not I. My heart was so light that I sang day and night. For all nature looked gay. You sang, sir, you say. Go then, says the ant, and dance the winter away. Thus ending, he hastily lifted the wicket and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. Fox called this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs and some have two. Adapted from Aesop's fable. So students, when I read the poem just now, I was doing listening, uh, reading session. And for you, you are doing listening session, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so if you can go back to your textbook, page number 21. Let us begin with the poem. Look into the first paragraph, the introduction of the poem. A fable is a story, often with animals as characters, that convey a moral. This poem about an ant and a cricket contains an idea of far-reaching significance, which is as true of a four-legged cricket as of a two-legged one. Surely you have seen a cricket that has two legs. So this poem is said to be a fable. When I say fable, fable is a poem or a story where uh, most of the characters or in fact sometimes all of the characters are animals all right so that is known as a fable so here in this poem this is a fable because 
the ant and the cricket, they are animals, isn't it? So that's why the main characters in the story, in the poem, they are animals. So that is why this is a fable. And this poem also contains a great moral lesson. When we say moral, that means it is a lesson for all of us to learn. Okay, so at the end of the poem, as we go on reading the poem, we will realize that it has very important life lesson. And then, uh, when I say cricket, you must all know a what is a grasshopper, isn't it? That hops we, uh, on the leaves that is green in color, right? So, uh, grasshopper and cricket, they are a little similar, all right? But this one, this is a little brownish in color. It has four legs and then uh, the, usually the males. The, the male crickets, they usually produce a creaking sound, it seems. So uh, I'll give you an example. If you live nearby the jungle, then you see chirping and creaking during the evening times and early morning, right? So that is the sound of the male cricket, okay? So uh, a grasshopper and a cricket uh, is of the same species, but because of the color and because of the creaking, creaking sound, that is the difference. And if you look into the first paragraph, the two lines, an idea of far-reaching sig significance, which is as true of a four-legged cricket as of a two-legged one. Surely you have seen a cricket that has two legs. So see, this particular animal, this insect, this has four, four legs, isn't it? But again, uh, the text is saying that sometimes we also come across two legs cricket also. So why is that? So as we go on reading the poem, we will understand the idea better. And after that, we will call, uh, come back into this, okay? Now you have understood and known what is a cricket and I hope you all know what is an ant, isn't it? It is a very hardworking small animal, right? So this is a poem, a story about an ant and a cricket. So now let us go into the first part of the poem. A, young, a silly young cricket accustomed to sing. So once, now the story is beginning, once it seems there was a very young, uh, silly cricket, okay? And all he did was he used to sing day and night. When you look into the meaning of accustomed, it is in page number 22 of your textbook. Accustomed to sing would mean used to singing in the habit of singing. So uh, you, you must be knowing some friends who are always in the habit of singing, right? So same with the cricket. He always used to sing and walk along. Through the warm, sunny months of gay summer and spring. So he, he used to sing day and night and then spend his summer and spring season. So nowadays we just got over with the spring season and now summer has arrived, isn't it? So all this time, all this weather, all this climate and all these times, this cricket, he used to sing about, okay? Begin to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter has come. So now see students, we all know that there are four seasons, right? So uh, it begins with spring and then summer and then autumn and then winter, right? So all along when the days were sunny, this cricket, he went along singing about and after the summer season got over, after the sunny days got over, winter came. And then after winter came, he started complaining because he said that his cupboard was empty. So here, cupboard would mean um, 
a piece of furniture where there is a lot of shelves. So you can put a lot of things in the shelf, right? So that is a cupboard. So his cupboard was empty would mean he had nothing to eat and he hadn't reserved anything for the winter. And he then realized that winter had come. Not a crown to be found on the snow covered ground. So see, when the winter time comes, it is all covered with snow, trees are no more green, and then there is less vegetation, right? And then everyone prefers to uh, stay indoors, isn't it? So in the, on the ground, there was not even a single piece of food to be found. Everything was empty and then everything was covered with snow. The, uh, we couldn't see the ground because the, snow, uh, the ground was all covered with snow. Not a flower could he see, not a leaf on a tree. So we all know that flowers bloom during the spring season and summer season, right? So now is the time that flowers bloom. But in the winter time, we see very less flowers blooming, isn't it? So that is why the cricket could not see even a single uh, flower blooming. And then the trees were also all empty. They just had the branches and the leaves had all fallen because it was winter time. Oh, what will become, says the cricket of me. Now he's really worried and thinking that what will become of him because winter has already come, he has not uh, stocked any food and then there is nothing for him to eat and even if he goes out, uh, he cannot find anything because the ground was all covered with snow, there was no vegetation, there were no trees and leaves, so he was really worried and now he's talking to himself. What will become of me? At last, by starvation and famine, made bold. So, the, the meaning of famine is unavailability of food, scarcity of food, having nothing to eat. That means uh, when the crops doesn't do well or when there is nothing to eat, then a kind of famine uh, uh, starts in the land. Okay? And then, because of the uh, famine, starvation will come. Starvation means suffering or death caused by lack of food. So when you don't have food for many days, for say one, two weeks, then you will definitely die, isn't it? Because your, uh, your body will have no more energy to survive. So because of extreme star starvation and then famine, famine because there was no food was available on the land, remember, because it was winter time. So because of that, because of these extreme conditions, um, this made the cricket very bold. Bold would mean here brave. That means he had to be brave and do something because if, if he don't do anything, then he would definitely die. All dripping with wet and trembling with cold, away he set off to a miserly end. So dripping with wet because he was walking outside. And then remember, this is winter time, so it was snowing. And then all trembling with cold because uh, here in Kohima also, it's very cold during the winter time, right? So we go out less and then we prefer to stay indoors by the fireplace, right? So it was very cold and snowing outside. That's why as the cricket was walking in search of food, he got all wet and now he was shivering. He was trembling with cold. And then he set out to meet a miserly ant. Here, the meaning of the word miserly would mean very stingy. Somebody who is very stingy and then uh, somebody who doesn't like to share things with one others. Okay, So here, the ant was known to be a very stingy uh, being. To see if to keep him alive, he would grant him shelter from rain. So now, the cricket is very desperate. He's hungry. He is uh, very worried. He's cold. He's trembling. And then, uh, in order to survive, he has to take food, right? So that is why he had a plan in mind. He was planning to go to the miserly ant. Miserly ant to 
ask for help so that uh, the aunt can provide him something with and then at least help him during the winter time. Shelter him from rain, that means give him protection from the rain because remember this cricket, all throughout uh, summer season, he sang all alone so he didn't do anything. It means that he's lazy, isn't it? So he must have not built his house also. So now he's worried not only about food but also for shelter. And a mouthful of grain. Grain here would mean things, uh, pulses like grain, rice, all those, and wheat, all those are grains, okay? So the end, uh, the cricket was very desperate and then he is now going to the end to ask him for help to protect him from uh, the rain, Shel give him shelter from the rain and then give him at least a mouthful of grain, that means something to eat so that he will be no more starved, okay? He wished only to borrow, he'd repay it tomorrow. So now the, uh, the cricket was thinking that even though the miserly ant gives him something to eat and then helps him uh, with the shelter, he was thinking in his mind that even though the ant helps him, he would definitely give him back. He will just borrow. Borrow means taking for some time. After that, later we will return. So uh, the cricket was planning that he would ask help from the ant and then later repay it back to him. Okay. If not, he must die of starvation and sorrow. So if the ant doesn't help the cricket, then definitely the cricket was supposed to die of starvation. Starvation, I told you that the meaning is extreme hunger, isn't it? Because of lack of food. So if the ant doesn't help the cricket, then he would die of starvation. Here, not only starvation, but of extreme sorrow also. Here, sorrow would mean sadness, okay? So not only of starvation, but of sadness also, the cricket will die because if the ant doesn't help the cricket, then definitely he will feel bad, isn't it? So that is why he's saying that he will die of starvation and sorrow. Now let's, let us go into the next page. Says the ant to the cricket, I am your servant and friend, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. Now we see that the cricket and the ant, they have already met, okay? And now the ant met the cricket, I mean, sorry, the cricket met the ant and then he, uh, it was sharing his uh, problem to the and seeing that he had nothing to eat, that's why if, you know, the ant would be kind enough to the cricket and give him something to eat and then give him uh, protection from the winter. So now, it all depends on the ant, whether uh, he decides whether to help the cricket or not, isn't it? So now, uh, the and is standing and listening to the cricket's problem. And then he's saying that, now here he says a very important thing. The ant says a very important thing. We ants never borrow, we ants never lend. So remember, I told you that the ant is a miserly ant, isn't it? So that is why uh, for the ant, they have a policy that they will ne never take from others, nor they will give anybody. Okay, so that is their policy. But tell me, dear cricket, did you lay nothing by when the weather was warm? So now the ant is really curious because see, ants are supposed to be very hardworking animals, isn't it? So now when the cricket told the ant that uh, he didn't have anything to eat, the ant was really shocked, okay? Because for them, they pile up all throughout the summer. They work very hard. If you see the ants, uh, you know, moving on the ground, they always carry something. And they carry loads which are, you know, three or four times bigger than their 
own size, isn't it? So, and they are very hardworking. So they have stocked everything for the winter. But it, for the cricket, he was so empty-handed. So it was really a shock for the end that the cricket hadn't saved anything. Okay, so that's why he's inquiring now. Okay, so now I understand your problem. But when the weather was fine, when it was summer and springtime, didn't you save anything for the winter? The ant is now inquiring the cricket, right? Caught the cricket, not I. So see, caught here would mean said. So here the cricket is saying that, not I, I didn't save anything for the winter. So he was very frank and direct. It just with two simple words, not I. He's saying that he didn't save anything for the winter. My heart was so light that I sang day and night. So see, now the cricket is uh, telling the ant that my heart was so light, I didn't think of anything. There was no worry in my heart. That is why I didn't think of anything to save. And then all I did was sing all throughout day and night. Okay. For all nature looked gay, you sang, sir, you say. So now again, the ant is very surprised because see, ant and cricket. As the poem progresses, we can see that these two are totally opposite creatures. One is very hardworking, you know, he saves everything for the future. And then again, the other one is happy-go-lucky. He does nothing. All he does is sing along when the weather is fine, right? And then he is supposed to be lazy. So these two animals meet, these two insects meet, in fact, and then uh, they are talking, but they are quite the opposite of each other that means they have different characters okay and now the ant is very shocked that it's very surprising that you didn't save anything for the winter i'm very shocked by your reply now the ant is saying go then says the ant and dance the winter away so now uh, the ant in the beginning must have thought that you know the cricket must have had some problem maybe at home or in his life. That is why he didn't work during the summertime. But the reply that uh, the cricket gave the ant, it really annoyed him, okay? It really angered him. That is why now the ant is telling cricket that, go now, now it's the winter time, you haven't saved anything. And you told me that all throughout uh, the summer season, you're being lazy and singing along. So now, even during the winter, you go and sing. Now also, you be happy and then you can dance the winter away. That means just like you behave during the summer season, just like you acted during the summer season, you should be same during even the winter season also. Now the end is, it's like kind of scolding also, isn't it? Now the end is scolding the cricket to dance the winter away. Okay. Thus, ending, he hastily lifted the wicket and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. So now, at the end, he hastily, here hastily would mean very, you know, very far, in a very fast manner, he lifted the uh, cricket and then he push the cricket out of the door. That means he's sending, the ant is sending the cricket away. Folks call this a fable, I'll warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs and some have four. So now, folks would mean many, pe many people are saying that this story is uh, a fable. That means it has a moral lesson. It has animals and insects in this story, in this poem. And then I also guarantee, now the poet is saying that, I also guarantee that this is true. But again, some crickets have four legs. Students, the last line is important if you can underline in your textbook, some crickets have four legs and some have two. So now here, what, this, uh, what does this line mean? Some crickets have four legs. 
some crickets have four legs and some two. We all know that animals have either four legs, eight legs, like, like that, isn't it? No animals have two legs, only mammals, right? But here in the poem, it is saying that some crickets, they have four legs and some have two. Why is that? Is because now the poet is comparing the cricket, the four-legged animal, to human beings. Okay, because we have two legs, isn't it? So that is why the cricket is being compared to some human beings who, uh, to human beings who have two legs. Not all human beings, but some human beings, the character symbolizes or is similar to the cricket, isn't it? They're lazy. They don't know do anything. So all those. Uh, as we do some important concepts in the poem, we will come into that. But the last line of the poem is really important from your exam point of view also. Sometimes question might come to let you explain this line. So in that, you can put a lot of examples about uh, human beings, about different natures of uh, human beings, and then compare it with the life of the cricket. And this poem adapted from Aesop's fable. So we all learned that uh, fable here means containing animal characters, isn't it? So here, this poem is adapted from Aesop's fable. So now here, Aesop. In the ancient uh, times in Greece, Aesop was a person Aesop, it is said that Aesop was a slave. Here slave would mean working under somebody, isn't it? Like a servant, right? So he was a slave and a very good storyteller, it seems. He was very good in story, uh, telling stories. See this poem, the story about the ant and the cricket is also very interesting, isn't it? So he was very good in storytelling and he lived between 1620 and 620, sorry, 620 and 564 BC. So this Aesop lived between 564 BC. So here, this BC would mean that this is before Christ, isn't that? That means he lived very long back. And this person, he was a slave and a very good storyteller. And then he lived between 620 to 564 BC. And then not only about this ant and the cricket, but it is said that he wrote many fables. He uh, told many fables and later these fables, these stories, were uh, compiled into literature. And then, verbal, firstly, before literature, it was uh, compiled and passed down from one generation to another as verbal registers. So when I say verbal registers, same like our folk uh, tales and stories. We also have verbal registers passing down from one generation to another through uh, storytelling through the mouth, isn't it? No written form, but only through verbal communication. So the, his collection of fables was uh, compiled into verbal registers and later into artistic media. So when I say artistic media,
this one artistic media here would mean when I say the word media the thing that you're doing right now you're watching uh, your classes through online isn't it so this is also a use of technology right so media here would mean TV television mobiles the internet computers all these are media okay so uh, this is an artistic media because most of his uh, of Aesop's fables were adapted into films into stories into cartoon characters like we can see Walt, Walt Disney's production also right we can uh, you know when we were children we used to uh, see cartoons about the ant and the cricket isn't it so all these adaptations were met about these uh, Aesop's fables and then they were later uh, adopted into artistic media and sometimes even artists also they depicted uh, this animals in the fable the animal characters and made it into great paintings okay so that is about the point of the poem and Students, for today, uh, we have just read the text uh, of uh, the, the poem, the formal introduction to the poem. We have read about it today. And in the next class, uh, we will study the poem in detail. Because see, in the poem, there are so many uh, important concepts and things that are important to you from your exam point of view also, right? So all those ideas, we will continue and share it in the next class. Thank you.